I come to the garden of the dew is still on the road and the voice I hear calling on my ear the Son of God is frozen and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet till the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none of us has ever known none of us has ever Father, we ask your forgiveness for what we 
done wrong, said wrong, or even thought wrong, Lord. Anything we should have done and didn't do, and all that we've done and shouldn't have done, Lord. We ask you to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy that you extend toward us. Thank you that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Thank you that you love, we love you because you first loved us. And Lord, we just thank you for this time of corporate prayer, this time of corporate communion with you. And Father, we lift up every person under the sound of my voice, those who are here and those who may be on the way, those who may be listening virtually, Lord. We just ask you to touch right now in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up those who have requested prayer, Specifically, Sister Padgett, Deacon Myrick's son, we lift them up now in the name of Jesus. We lift up Sister Kathy's granddaughter, and we Lord, we just ask you to move in their lives. We thank you for your healing power manifested, oh God. Lord, we just thank you for God in the hands of the doctors, the medical staff, personnel, that you will show them what, what needs to be done to remedy the situation and to bring them and to aid them in being restored back to complete health. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up the True Love Missionary Baptist Church family. Every person, every member of God, every member of their family, oh God, we lift them up. Lord, we lift up our community members, those who come on a regular basis, oh God, each week and from time to time. We lift up our visitors, Lord, Father, we just thank you. We lift up this community that you have placed us in, Ebor City. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to be even, even greater, the light that you have called us to be, the salt that you have called us to be. Help us, Lord, to exemplify you in all that we say and do. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up the New Hope Missionary Baptist Church family. Thank you for continuing to strengthen them and guide them in the way that you would have them to go, as well as us here at True Love. Also for Mount Olive Missionary Baptist, Lord. We lift them up, O oh God, as they prepare for, for a new leadership, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up this entire community, city of your yeah. city, our, our community leaders, our government leaders, Lord, our mayor, our governor, our president, all of our international leaders, Lord, at all levels, oh God, we lift those up in authority over us. We pray for our law enforcement, Lord, and our military. Thank you, Lord, for keeping them safe, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for the community at large. Thank you for your peace prevailing, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for the killing and the violence to cease in the name of Jesus. Lord, we understand that we're living in the last days. And you said that these things would be happening, that they would increase and multiply. But Lord, we thank you that your word is true, that it's being fulfilled. And we thank you, Lord, for your grace. Because you said where sin doth abound, grace doth much more abound with God. We thank you, Lord, that you have it all in control. And we trust in you each and every day. Help us, Lord, to cast all of our cares upon you because you care for us. Help us, Lord, to go to you, even with the little things, when you say cast all of our cares on you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up marriages everywhere, relationships, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for bringing them into the fullness of your will, oh God, into the fullness of the destiny that you have ordained for their lives, both as couples and as individuals, oh God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just give you praise. We lift up our school system, Lord. We lift up our students, their parents, their families, the teachers, oh God, the teachers' aides, the substitutes. We lift up the school administrators, oh God, the school staff, the school board, oh God, who oversees all of this, oh God. We lift up our colleges, oh God. Lord, we just thank you for peace 
and righteous learning, righteousness and learning throughout all levels of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory, oh God. We lift up all of those who are in need of healing, oh God, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, financial, whatever the need is, Lord, you promise to supply all of our need according to your riches and glory yeah. by Christ Jesus. And Father, we thank you for being faithful to your word. Lord, we just give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory, for it's all in Jesus' name. We lift up the bereaved families, oh God, specifically the family of Sister Walker and family of Sister Powell, and all of those who may not, we may not know and those who we do know, Lord. We lift them up, oh God. Thank you for comforting them in this hour of loss and as they adjust to their new norms. Yes, sir. Yes. Bless their families, their children, their grandchildren, oh God. As they move forward, oh God, comfort them, Lord, yeah. like only you can, for you are the God of all comfort. Thank you for your peace that passes all understanding, keeping their hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Letting them know, Lord, that everything is going to be all right. Lord, we just give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory, for it's all in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good evening, Dick and Jerry. You doing all right? Yeah, I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. My shoulder's hurting a little, but um, I want to be all right in Jesus' name. How you doctor doing? Um, well, I haven't had one recently. I was supposed to have one um, next next week, but I canceled it till I get back. But we thank God for each of you who have gathered so far. Um, I need to put this on silent before it ring, ring again. Been doing all right yourself? Yeah, I'm doing all right. All right, looking at our um, handout for this evening, uh, prayer scriptures. Um, our first one says um, Jeremiah, the 32nd chapter, verse 27. Says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? I am the Lord, the God of all flesh, God said. He asked the question, Is there anything too hard for me? Then Jeremiah answers it. He goes, I guess he kind of backtracked because. The question is in verse 27, and then he goes back, we go back to verse 17, and Jeremiah writes, he says, Our Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. And so we see the question and the answer. God asks the question, he says, is there anything too hard for me? He said, I'm the God of all flesh. Everything that's alive. God said, I'm responsible for it being here. And he said, is there anything too hard for me? And the answer is, there is nothing. There is nothing too hard for God. He tells us to cast all of our cares on him because he cares for us. A lot of times we have things that we feel that we can handle and we feel we don't need to bother God about it. But he said, even the stuff that we know we can handle, that we feel pretty sure of, he said, cast that on him too. He said, talk to him about it. Also looking at Isaiah 55 and 11, he says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. He 
He tells us in Isaiah, he said, my word. God says the word that he speaks, that goes out of his mouth. And Jesus said one day, he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Amen. It's because of God's word that everything we see, including ourselves, even the chairs we sit on, the floor we're standing on, the building that we're inside of, it's all because of the word of God. Because one day God said, let there be. You might say, well, how can that, how can that be? The chair doesn't have life. But the chair just it didn't just pop up here. You know. The chair started, it started out in somebody's mind. It started off with life. Yeah. It started off in the life of a person's mind. Then they put it on paper how they wanted it to look. Then they started gathering the materials to make it look what, what they were seeing inside of what they done put on paper. And they came up with this chair. Same thing with the building. The building started out with a blueprint, but it started out in the mind of somebody first. I believe, I believe it started out in the mind of Reverend Carpenter. He conveyed it to the architect. And the architect put it on paper. And then the contractor read the blueprint. And it's amazing that God can give one person the inspiration, and then he give another person the ability to build and manifest what somebody else done thought of. Matter of fact, it started from the tree of life. From the tree of life, that's right. From the track, first the <laughs> Mm-hmm. That's right. So every, everything, everything we see on this earth can be attributed back to God. Yeah. Even I'm, I'm reminded of um, Saint John, the first chapter. It says, "But it says without Him was not anything made that was made." Because it says, "In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God." And the word was God. And said, so without him was not anything made that was made. That's, that's a bold statement to make. Yep. But God can back up what he said. And so he says here in Isaiah 55 and 11, he said, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. He said, whatever I say, whatever comes out of my mouth, God says, he said, it shall not return Unto me and boy. That means that it's not, he says, it's going, when God speaks, his word is going to accomplish something. He says, it's not going to come back to me void or empty or unfulfilled. He said, but it shall. He didn't say it might or maybe. He said, it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper. He said, whatever I desire my word to do, he said, that's what it's going to do. Whatever I say, God, God says, whatever I say for my word to do, that's what it's going to do. And he says, it shall accomplish what he intends for it to accomplish. And he says, it's also going to prosper. He said, whoever he send the word to, he said, it's going to prosper. And you know, we are recipients of God's word. We, if we look back over our life, in spite of the trials and tribulations and the, the challenges that we've had to go through, we can say that we're better off now than before. Because of God's word. Because of God speaking his word into our lives. Because God speaking us into existence. Good evening to y'all. Hey. All right, we're looking at our fourth scripture on our hand now. Psalm 107, verses 20 through 22. It says, He sent His word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Now, we started out, Jeremiah asked the question, 
No, we start out, God said, to behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. And God asks the question. He says, is there anything too hard for me? And then Jeremiah answered him and said, Oh, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for me. And then in Isaiah 55, he says, My word that goes forth out of my mouth, so it won't come back to him empty or void or un unfulfilled. But he says it's going to accomplish what he intends for it to accomplish. And it's going to prosper into whomever he sends it to. And so now here at Psalm 107, verses 20 through 22, he says, it says, God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. And see, and see, as we gather here tonight to pray, we, we, can, we, we have the understanding that there is no distance in prayer. Because God said, I'll send my word to wherever the, the, the need is. And he's saying, I'll deliver from destruction. There, there was a, there's an account in the Gospels of the, uh, I think it was J.R. Saruma. He came to Jesus and said, so my daughter lies at the point of death. No, the centurion. He said, my servant was, was lying at the point of death. And he said, and Jesus said, he said, I'll come lay hands on him. And he said, no, you don't, you don't even have to do that, Jesus. He said, I'm, I'm not even worthy for you to come to my house. He said, well, just speak the word. Sure. He said, just speak the word. And he said, I, I, he said, I believe in your word. And th this, this was a man that was, he wasn't even a Jew. He was a Gentile like us. But he believed the word of God just that much that if Jesus said that his servant would be healed, he'd be healed. And Jesus even marveled at his faith. Because he even told Jesus, he said, I, 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 he said, I supervise people. I have soldiers under me. And he said, I can, I can tell them to do something. And he said, I don't have to micromanage them either. He said, I can tell them to go do something. I can send word to them to get something done. And he said, I don't even have to worry about it. Because I trust them right. enough to get done what I tell them. Right. And so he tells Jesus, he said, now if you would just send the word, just give me the word that my servant will be healed when I get home. He said, I'll take that. And Jesus told him, he said, he said, go on home then. When he got home, the next day, the Bible said, his servant was already healed. And he asked him, he asked him, so when, when did your healing come? And, and the servant told him what time the healing came. And he said it was about, it was about the same, it was the exact same time that he had spoke to Jesus. And so it says here, says here in, in, in Psalms that he sent his word and healed and delivered from the struggle. Good evening, Sister Brandon. And then it says here in Psalm 107 and 2 and 1, it says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Say, oh, that men would just praise God for his goodness and for his wonderful works to us, we the children of men. Then verse 22 says, and let them sacrifice the sacrifice of the thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. I believe it's in Hebrews that it says, let us offer therefore the sacrifice of praise with the fruit of our lips giving him thanks. And it tells us here in Psalm, say, let us sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. See, a sacrifice is something that you won't have to give up, you won't have to give up. You may not, you may not feel like it, you may not want to, or, or it, it may not necessarily be a strain, but, but you go in the extra mile and get it done. And, then, and it says, yes, and let us sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving. But sometimes things can be going on in your life 
and you don't really be in a praise attitude. And you have to you have to put yourself in a praise attitude. It's in, in somewhere in Isaiah, it says God has given us the garment of praise for the spirit of heavens. And sometimes the burden of life will weigh you down. You'll have you depressed. You'll lose your motivation. You'll lose your desire to, 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 to go forth and to go on with God. And those, those are times when, when you have to put on the garment of praise. You have to make yourself praise God. It's just like days when you don't feel like going to work, and you, have, you say, well, let me drag myself on out of here. Yeah. And you have to push yourself. Somebody said, say push stands for pray until something happens. We can say praise. You change that P from pray to praise. Praise until something happens. Because sometimes it's in our praise that, that our deliverance comes when we make a sacrificial praise. So Lord, I'm ready. And then it says, and declare his works with, with rejoicing. Declare what God is doing. Declare what God has done. Sometimes we have to think about what God has already done. Yeah. I believe what David said, he said, he said, I would have fainted until I begun to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And sometimes we have to look at, we have to, sometimes when life doesn't look flowery, and it don't look sunny like it look out there now. And sometimes you have to remind yourself of what God has already done for you. And know that if he did it before, he can do it again. If he brought you out before, he can bring you out again. If he healed you before, he can heal you again. If he delivered you before, he can deliver you again. If he got you alive today, <clears throat> what that song we sing sometimes? I made it out. I made it out all right. Exactly what you're saying. Exactly what you're saying. Because without the faith, and what is faith? There's trust yeah. in him. That's it. To give him the obedience mm -hmm. to be a bondage to him. That's right. You have to trust. It's a woman of faith. Mean, and, and, you know, for, for someone, who doesn't know him of your teaching? I appreciate it, brother. You know what I mean? For them, for them to truly to understand it, I say to them, go to Romans six to ten, mm -hmm. and they'll show you. And even Isaiah, Hebrews mm -hmm. explains to you very clearly about the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to accept to them. I want you to be able to step aside and to be obedient to him. It's not easy. It's not easy. No, it's not. It's not always easy, but it's, it's, not. A, it's a teaching. That's why you, as a teacher, as a disciple, you're trying to bring it. You're bringing it to us the way it should be. Well, we're all, we're all disciples. Oh, no, we are. I mean, you just said a few minutes ago, right, right, to come upon a person and the Lord, just to have that moment. Forget about yourself. Forget about the flesh. Think about what he's going through or she's going through. Mm -hmm. To have the compassion. Yeah, and that's why you have to offer up sacrifice of praise. Yeah, so that's all the when, you, when you're going through, you don't always feel like praising God. Amen. Especially if, if the pain is there. It is. It can, be, it can be physical pain. It can even be emotional pain. It can be financial pain. Oh. You, wonder, you wonder how God, you wonder, where's the way, God? Lord, I need you to make a way. And even in the midst of when things don't look like we wanted to look, that's when we have to say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I give you the praise. Lord, I give you the glory. Lord, I know that it's going to get better. Think about Jesus. The Bible says, the Bible says, even Jesus, who for the joy 
that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. He stopped looking at what he stopped looking at what he was going through. He started looking at what he was going to. The joy that was set before him. I mean, he hadn't reached the joy yet. When he was on Calvary, he hadn't reached the joy yet. He said, now, see, when he got there, when he got there, he said, now he's seated at the right hand of the Father. I can imagine Jesus got up there to heaven and sat down next to God. I can imagine. I mean, I know I was I was gonna say, thank you, God. I made it over. But Jesus got to the point, just like us sometimes, he wanted to give up. He said, he said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup. He said, I ain't going to move the cup, but if you want to move it, I ain't going to fight you at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And see, he realized that was his flesh, that flesh you were talking about. Yeah. See, that was the flesh talking. And he said, nevertheless, not what I want. Because if, if God answered according to how we were feeling a lot of times, we wouldn't even be here today. Amen. Amen. We, we would have just turned around and said, look, I'm going right back out there where I come from and do what I used to do. But then we started thinking about God has brought us too far and he's been too good. Too good. Good. And we said, I'm, I'm going to press on. And that's what Jesus did. He said, not what I want. He said, because I didn't come here to please me. <laughs> he said, I come to please my father. This all. And so, it's, so we have to offer up sometimes the sacrifices of praise, the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And then our last verse, Matthew 18, verses 18 through 20, says, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. He says, again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For when two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Jesus said, if I can get at least two of y'all, two of us, to just agree, touch and agree. And you don't even have to, you don't even have to touch physically. Agree, touch in your spirit. Touch by faith. Because like you say, it's all by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Because the, the word of God says, you don't need faith for what you can see. This is what you can't see. And he said, he said, whatever we bind on earth, God said, whatever we, whatever we, we stop on earth, God said, I'll stop it in heaven. But he said, whatever we allow, whatever we loose on earth, he'll loose in heaven. That means that what God's saying, he said, he'll back us up for whatever we stand on, but, but for whatever we don't stand on too. So Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. If you, if, if, if we can't believe for it, God said that if, if, if but, but yet God said all things are possible to them that believe. Yeah, he said, and if, we, if he can get us to believe, God said he can back us and cause it to happen. But he said he, he, can't, he can't make us, he can't force us to believe. He can, he can show us what he can do. And we can say, Lord, I believe for it. And, and, he, and he said, he said, whatsoever you bind and whatsoever you loose, he said, it'll be loosed in heaven or it'll be bound in heaven. And what God is saying is that the, the ball is in our court. He said, Jesus said, he's according to your faith. A lot of the people that came up, up to him, he said, he said, be it unto you according to your faith. He told that woman with the issue of blood. He said, your faith made you whole. 
It's not that God wasn't involved, but she had already decided. The Bible says she said within herself. She ain't talked to nobody about it. She ain't had a prayer partner. She said within herself. When she heard about what Jesus was doing, it says she heard, said within herself, she said, if I can get close enough to him and touch the hem of his garment. Because see, she understood the the she understood how, how the, the anointing worked on the priest. She knew that if, if he was truly anointed of God, not only was he anointed, but his clothes, the clothes he had on him, was anointed. And, and, and if you go over into, and, into the book of Acts, after the Holy Ghost came, the Bible said the shadows were, was anointed. Because it said the, the apostle would walk down the street and said the people would just lay for their shadow to pass over them and they were, people would get healed. And that's how much of the Holy Ghost that was flowing through them. And, and Jesus said, and that woman said, she said, if I could touch the hem of his garment, she said, I don't have to shake his hand, I don't have to see his face. I just need to get close enough to touch something that's attached to him. And when she touched him, when she touched the, 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 the edge of his robe, Jesus said, wait. He said, somebody touch me. He didn't say somebody touch my clothes. He said, somebody touch me. Yeah. And the disciples and the disciples talking about, what you mean, talk somebody? All these people around you, the evil in the midst of a crowd, and it's all these people pushing up against you. And you talking about, yeah, somebody touch you. They're about to push you down. <laughs> That's right. And Jesus said, no, it wasn't that kind of touch. He said, all of y'all touching me. But he said, but there was a touch that pulled the virtue out of me. He said, I felt the power. He said, I felt my word leave out of me going to accomplish something. Like what Isaiah said. And he said, my word ain't coming back to me more. He said, I felt, and see that word virtue is the same word in, in the Greek, the Greek word is dunamis. And it's where we get the word English word dynamite from. And Jesus said, I felt the power leave out of me. The explosive power. Life-changing power. And he started looking around to see who touched him. Okay. And he saw that lady. And, and what he said, uh, he said, your faith made you whole. He said, all you did was tap into my power. God was just waiting for you. To, he was waiting for you to touch and agree with me. And see, she touched the two of them, touched and agreed. And God delivered. And he said, two, he, he said here in Matthew, he said, if any two of you, if two of you would just agree and touch anything that we shall ask, say it shall be done by his father, by God our Father in heaven. Because he said, when where two or three of us are gathered together in his name, he said, he's in the midst. So that means he's right here now. Amen. So there's two, two or three of us here now. Six of us. So that's double power. <laughs> double power plus. What's that? Go, 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 power reigns. <laughs> Gather together in his name. He's in the midst. See, and it's, it's, it's easy to come together when you know it's going to be a crowd here. See, but, but, but times like these, evenings like these, is when you have to get in the press. And you say, Lord, I'm pressing my way out. I heard somebody say, there's a blessing in the press. Sometimes we don't see the blessing right away. But God is watching. And says the, the word says, God is not unrighteous to forget your work and your labor of love. Because it takes a labor of love, it takes a sacrifice. 
Because all of us can think of something we could be doing right now. We could be home relaxing. Or doing something comfortable, sipping on some tea or something. But we made the sacrifice. <clears throat> so at this time, we're going to give away. Did anybody have any additional comments on um, on what we discussed tonight? <laughs> you agree with it all? <laughs> I mean, it's pretty awesome. You know, it's pretty awesome. You know, he even talked about, you know, one day we will, we will all come together as one. Pastor, I seen 20 years ago where everybody was separated. Mm -hmm. Baptists would stay with Baptists, Catholics would stay with Baptists. And my problem was this why don't you read the word? And understand it for what he's actually saying mm -hmm. to each and every one of us. It's only labels. It's about him, the Messiah. Yeah. Sometimes it takes some of us you know, takes some of us to understand. Him. I mean, for for his sacrifice, what he did for us. Mm -hmm. And you you got them talking about it already. You know, there there's how many people in this room there, right? We got two, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine six of us goes out there, which I've seen it done in this ministry, just to touch one. He talked about it, just bringing one mm -hmm. of his understanding according to his law. Nothing on the flesh. His soul. The mindset. The mind change. You have to renew your mind to the word. You know, I even got a problem with it today. But guess what? I know I can't do without him today. No, we I know that. Jesus said without him we can do nothing. And the miracles that's coming about now in my life Blows me away. I mean, in a couple weeks, probably three weeks, this goes through. I go to South Carolina. Oh, yeah, I'm going to. And that's a blessing. No, it's a blessing from him. Because my goal is to start another ministry there. He's given me the gift. That he, what he wants me to do. It's not what I want to do. It's what he's directed me to do. Okay. Well, and I know he will not I do that. He'll provide. He'll provide and make a way. Yes, he will. There's something impossible. Talks about it even in Luke, bro. 137. Come on. To put your trust in him. To make that change. And I will walk. He walks with us. Our problem is we walk away from him. That's the problem. Step aside, give it to him. He'll take care of every problem. Yeah, that's what we were I've seen him in my life. That's all our cares on him. Yeah, bro. He said every, everything we care about, he said he cares about it. No, he said all he wants to do. And he will take care of it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, by faith, trust. All right, so we're going to move on. And um, at this All time, right. does anyone have a prayer request or a praise report? All right, well, if not, then um, we're going to um, we're going to pray. And um, I'm going to ask um, Sister Priscilla. Thank you, Jerry. Then I'll close out. I need the oh, I need thee every hour. I Savior, I come to 
I come because I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. As we go down in prayer, as we pray, let's remember um, Sister Padgett, who had to be rushed to the hospital this evening, this afternoon. Also, um, Deacon Myrick's son, William, who we were told had suffered a heart attack. Pray for his healing. Also, um, pray for Sister Kathy. Her granddaughter um, was um, experiencing sickness also. And let's remember all those who are on our prayer list as well. All right, you go ahead, Sister Priscilla. Yes, Lord. Father God, we come to you right now. Yes, yes. Yes, Lord. 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 Father God, you let them know that you'll never leave them. Yes, yes, them Father. Yes. I should you right now, Heavenly Father, Lord, that you love them. Right, right now, Lord. Lord, ask them by you right now, Heavenly yes. Father. Touch them, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Let them, let them ask, talk to you, Father God. Yes. You know all about what they need, Father God. I see you right now, Lord, our pastor, Father God. Keep yes. standing yes. before you. In the name Lord. of Jesus. Keep you strong, Father God. Strengthen in your words, Father God. I see you right now, Lord. Mr. Mr. Casey, Mr. Casey. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord. Father God, as you guys. Keep them in your care, Lord. Jesus. They may be, Father Yes, Lord. Just keep them, Father God. Father God, as you are the President of the United States. Father God, go to go to Governor of Florida, Father God. Yes. Father God, as you guys are doing all these things in the Holy Spirit. Some organizations that's the head of the organization that you be the head of the organization, Father God. Yes, yes, yes. Not the head of the Yes, yes. But you right now, Father God, our entire family, the ones here, Father God, for each family member that's standing in the gap for another family member, Father God. Father God, for Sister Helen right now, Father God. In the name of Jesus. Father God, for the people of God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I said you have the Father right now because we all need you. Yes, we do, Lord. Yes, we do. Right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, heaven, Father, as you go in the household, yes, Lord. Father God, as you go with Brother Timmy and Copy, Father God. Yes. Brother Timmy Russell, Father God. Lord, our deacons of true love, Father God. Not just for true love, but the deacons of him everywhere. Everywhere, Father God. As you touch them right now, Father God. Father God, I should do my entire family, Father God. From the head of the head of our family to the end of our family, Father God. But most of all, I should do Father God for thank you for the God of Jesus. Yes, yes. Who pay a price, Father God, for all of us. Uh, yes. And I'm saying good and he needs to pay a price. In the name of Jesus. Father God, I should be ready now, Father God, to go to the, the little children that's sick in the in the town in the head start, Father God. Go to the ones that got cold. Go to the ones that got thought and infection, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, I should heal these little children. In the name of Jesus. Touch their bodies, Father God, and that you heal them from the inside to the outside, Father. Yes, yes, yes. Touch their bodies, Father God. Right now, Father God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, Jesus. Touch our bodies. Please. Heal Jesus, Father God. Yes, Lord. Father God, keep us up from the disease and the sickness that we have in our bodies, Father. As we live on this earth, Father God. I see you in our mercy, Lord. Father God, I see you go right now. Each person right now, right right now. 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 Right
Yeah. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up Deacon Myrick, oh God, and his son, oh God. Thank you for continuing to touch his body and to strengthen him, oh God. Lord, you said, wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and you will strengthen our hearts, oh God. We thank you for strengthening William's heart, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Touch him, Lord, from the top of his head to the sole of his feet, oh God, from the surface of his skin to the most internal part. Only your eyes can see and only your hands can reach, oh God. Lord, we just give you praise. We give you honor and glory, oh God. Lord, we lift up Sister Heather, oh God. Thank you for continuing to touch her body and strengthen her, oh God, and restore her, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. <coughs> Father, we lift up every person under the sound of my voice, oh God. Sister Cassandra, oh God. Sister Heather, oh God. Deacon Jerry, oh God. Brother Peter, oh God. Sister Priscilla, oh God. To all of us who are here this evening, oh God, thank you, Lord, for moving in our lives as you see fit, oh God. Moving in the life of true love, missionary Baptist church family, oh God. Those who are members and those who affiliate themselves with us. Those who come each to each time the doors are open. Those who come from time to time, oh God. Bless them, oh God. Let your will be done in their lives, oh God. Let your kingdom come, oh God, and your will be done, oh God. In the name of Jesus. We lift up our school system, oh God. We lift up our children, oh God, from, from Head Start and Pre-K all the way up to high school and even college, oh God. Lord, touch them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Touch Sister Priscilla in the classroom, oh God. Give her the wisdom and insight, oh God, for each and every child, oh God, that they will feel love, oh God. Help her to show the love that, that you have for them and that you emanate through her, oh God. Bless her, Lord, and as she, whatever she puts her hands to, Lord, you promise to cause it to prosper, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for her promotion, oh God, in the name of Jesus, giving her the joy and the peace that she desires in the classroom with the students, with their families, oh God, with, the, with her co-workers, oh God, with her administrators and supervisors, oh God. Lord, I lift up every aspect of the program in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Lord, supply all of her need, oh God. Bless her with the housing that she desires, oh God. In the name of Jesus, open doors of opportunity, oh God. Lord, they, the world say that, that it's hard to own a house, but you can make a way, oh God. Lord, you say you will give us houses that somebody else built, oh God. And Lord, we just thank you for opening these doors of opportunity, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for blessing, oh God. Above and beyond what we can ask or think. You said, now unto him. Who is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to your power that worketh in us, O oh God? And Lord, we're trusting you to make a way. Thank you for making a way for Sister Brandy and Sister Heather, O oh God, Hank and Jerry, and Sister Priscilla, O oh God, and Sister Cassandra, O oh God, and Brother Peter, O oh God, for each and every one, O oh God, for the entire true love family, O oh God. Lord, we lift up Sister Hernandez, oh God. Touch her body right now in the name of Jesus. Strengthen her, Lord, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Touch her mind. Touch her body. Touch her soul and her spirit, oh God. Bless her family, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. Lord, we can't thank you enough for all that you do for us, oh God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up Mother Green and and Mother Howard, Mother Minnie Howard, and Mother Queen Esther yes. Howard, oh God. Mother Catherine Johnson, oh God. Touch them, oh God. Strengthen them, oh God. Touch our young people, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, give, keep them motivated. Lord, stir them up, oh God, with the heart and the mind to serve you, oh God. Help them, Lord, to face the challenges that they have to face these in these days, oh God. In the name of Jesus. And help them to call, call them, enable them, Lord, to stand for you, oh God. Regardless of God, bless our young adults, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, stir them up, oh God. Lord, send them out, oh God. Give them a new, give them a new hunger, oh God, and a new desire to please you and to serve you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Those who may be going somewhere else to receive the word, bless them, oh God, to get what they need, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Help them to thrive, oh God, in, in their walk with you, oh God. Bless them and their children that they're raising, oh God. And they will be the light that they need to be for their children, oh God. And they will, will represent Jesus and that they will show Jesus to their children, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we just ask you to bless the ones 
that are in attendance and those that will be coming, oh God. Thank you for filling your house, oh God, with people who hunger and thirst after righteousness, oh God, and desire to please you, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for anointing me even the more, oh God, that I will continue to write the divide your word, oh God, that I will preach what you would have me to preach, oh God, that I will speak boldly the word that you give unto me, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just give you praise. We give you honor and we give you glory, oh God. We lift up all our churches everywhere that's lifting up the name of Jesus, that's advancing the kingdom of God, oh God, that's striving to please you, Lord, in all things, oh God. Lord, I pray for our government agencies, oh God, our local administrator, local governor, our mayor, our governor, our, our president, oh God, and the, the international presidents, oh God, all of our political leaders, oh God. Lord, we thank you for righteous leadership, oh God, in government, oh God. Lord, just tell us that you will cause things to be peaceful for us, oh God, when we pray for those in authority over us. And Lord, we lift them up now, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift up our law enforcement, oh God, protect them, oh God, as they serve to serve the people, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We lift up our military, oh God. Lord, we pray for the crisis in, in, in the Middle East, oh God. Bless Israel, oh God. Lord, send peace, oh God, in the name of Jesus. You tell us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, oh God. And Lord, we're asking you to cause, cause the war to cease, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Help the people to get back to a normal life, oh God, for whatever amount of time it may take, oh God. But Lord, we're just asking you to move on behalf of your people, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, help them to make the best decisions and the right decisions, oh God, concerning all things, oh God. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you honor and glory. For it's all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank God for each of you <clears throat> coming out this evening. Um, in the line of announcements, um, this Sunday, this Sunday is our third Sunday. Um, the young people, teens and youth, um, are scheduled to rehearse at 12 o'clock Saturday. So um, I actually encourage those that you know to come out and be a part. And um, I'll try to get here once the um, service is over. And those of us who will be attending, um, they are they're requesting for um, anyone available to help out serving for the repast, which will be after the service in the um, CLC. But um, if we're there, we'll just be on hand and help out in a way that's needed. I mean, most likely, I'm thinking, if it was anything like last Saturday, that they'll have, there'll be plenty of help there. But um, it's always good to have extra hand. So just let's, let's just keep Sister Walker lifted up and keep her family lifted up, Deacon uh, Norman and Sister Norman as well, as they go through this hour of bereavement. And everything will transpire smoothly. Also, um, just continue to lift me up in prayer and um, that we continue to do the will of God as, as God's people and as God's children. Um, anything else that I'm overlooking? All right. We're doing the dinner after church this Wednesday. You are? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, well, all, if all hearts and minds are clear, thank y'all for coming out this evening. Thank God for enabling me to be here. Um, let's stand for our benediction and close it for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise, we give you honor and glory, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us to come together again in corporate prayer and in the impartation and study of your word, Lord. Lord, we ask that as, as we leave this place, we do not leave your presence, O oh God. Thank you for your divine protection, direction, and guidance, O oh God. Thank you for the ministering angels keeping charge of us, taking us from all word, harm, and danger, the seen and unseen, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us as we go forth, O oh God. You promised to send your angels before us to prosper our way, O oh God. Thank you for supplying every need according to your riches and glory. 
by Christ Jesus, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for just keeping us until we come, come, come together again. Thank you for peaceful encounters with whoever we come in contact with, oh God, in the name of Jesus. That the words of my mouth and the, the, words of my mouth, and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. amen. God bless you. Thank <laughs> you.